Hello friends, Pastor Preston is my name. I'm so excited to come your way today. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I love Jesus so much, not because I know love, but because I've learned his love and I've learned to express that love to the brethren. That's what we see as love in scriptures. It's not how much we can love him. It is how much we have become obedient to what his word says and manifests to the brethren. Glory to God. And that's why I'm bringing you an amazing teaching that the Lord has instructed that I come here to share the serpent okay but first i want to say this I, I i don't just show up to teach new things because i want to be healed or praised or feel like i know some stuff and all that no because i know nothing all that i manifest is the spirit of god working in me right so i i just come by instruction of god so not trying to show off or trying to show that i know so much and all that so i want you to keep that first in your mind secondly um i'm not uh, in the character of wanting to contradict what has always been there but it's important to note that the things that are not right, okay, has to be straightened up. Jesus did the same thing in Matthew chapter number five. You saw him all the time. We say, they said to you this, but I say this to you. They say that, but I say this to you. Because one of the things that is very important in Christianity is the fact that we need to know the mind of God so we can function like God. If we don't know God's mind correctly, we cannot function like God correctly. That means our doctrine will be wrong and our worship will be wrong. Our faith will be wrong. That's the truth. Okay, so and knowing God's mind will be knowing God's word because God is his word and his word is his manifestation. Glory to God. So today I want to talk to you about the misconception about the serpent, the misconception about the serpent. And I think this has done a lot of danger in the body of Christ. That's why the Lord is instructing me that I should do it. As a matter of fact, I taught somewhere and while I was doing that voice you note know, to help certain people write in certain things, the Lord said to me, you have to truncate this video and come and have it recorded. That's why I'm doing this video now. So I had to stop what I was even teaching the, the people. It was just something I was going to add in the teaching to come here and do this video. And I want you to pay attention closely. Let us learn what God has to say and use that to take up the gray areas in our faith that our practice will be great and then we will be his glorious church according to Ephesians chapter number 6, 5 verse number 26 and 27. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the serpent was mentioned in Genesis chapter number 3 for some kind of evil and I want us to look at it very closely. Okay, look at it. Genesis chapter number 3 verse number 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. First of all, you know that when we read in the Old Testament like this, we must always bring them allegorically to unveil a truth so we don't get wrong. Colossians chapter number 1 verse number 27 shows us that. He says, this is the things that have been hid for ages and has been made known unto us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. These are the miseries that have been hid for ages. He was referring to the Old Testament. Also, we saw in Ephesians chapter number 3 verse number 3 and 4, where it said the mysteries of Christ, which have been unveiled in Christ, that when you read, you will understand my revelations in Christ. So he calls it again mysteries. Also, somewhere in, around Romans, we found the same statement. Even with Christ in Luke 24 from 24, Five, right it says oh fool and slow of heart to believe the things that were written ought not christ to have suffered these things and to die and then he said something very profound i'm beginning at moses and all of the prophet he expounded of the things concerning himself expounded is a greek word that means he interpreted so jesus had to interpret the things uh interpret from genesis to malachi so they can understand it from himself as against what they used to know as a matter of fact he called what they used to know an error he called what they used to know foolishness sorry to say hallelujah that's what they called it so the same thing we're trying to do here now now we're seeing a terminology serpent here and for every time we hear serpent the perspective comes as the devil but let me show you something right i did a lot of research on this right as the lord instructed that i would do and i found something very amazing okay there is something called the samaritan copy you know there are a lot of copies uh parchments copies different copies right of the renderings of the bible there are so many copies to to pick right let me say this so you can get this right you know a lot of time when people say well what's the original manuscript what's the original manuscript well there are many original manuscripts yes there are many original manuscripts so sometimes as a matter of fact all the interpreters did not interpret from one manuscript they interpreted from several manuscripts so you must be careful so one copy here which is called the Samaritan copy, gave an expression as this. He said, um, instead of Nakash, 
a serpent, right? It says reeds shakash, right? A liar or deceiver. Instead of nakash, which is N A C H A S H, is uh, uh, which means a serpent. It says read uh, shakash, which is C A C H A S H. So very close. The only difference is an N and a C. It says a liar or deceiver, right? And then he gives an expression. It says uh, John chapter number eight, verse number fourteen. Uh, John eight forty four. And watch what was there. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. And abode not in the truth. And abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, in Genesis chapter number 3 verse number 1, we saw that this serpent was what showed up to Eve to deceive Eve. Now, the serpent was not the problem. It was what was in the serpent that was the problem. And what was in the serpent is shakash, which is a liar. Glory to God. So that tells you that the serpent in itself is not the devil. The serpent in itself was a creation of God. Glory to God. The serpent was a creation of God. The serpent was not the devil. However, right, he deceived them because it was more subtle. And then the liar was speaking from the serpent. Very amazing scripture that I want you to see. So that's what you found in Genesis chapter number three, verse number one, right? Three, two now says, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. Hallelujah. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. For, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, a liar, a liar. Right? Look at it. And it says, for God doth know that the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall he shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Now he lies, and look what he used to set the lie for the lie to be accepted. He speaks of their interest. He speaks of their interest. And of their interest he spoke, made the lie to make sense for which Eve had to buy the opinion. Look at 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, because, are you seeing that? When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and the tree is desired to make one wise, Hallelujah. She took of the fruit thereof and did it. So the woman did not eat of the fruit because she wanted to deliberately disobey God. But the woman ate because she, she felt that the fruit was to their benefit. The fruit was good for food, which is to mean that the fruit was good, was had wisdom in it. So Satan always will not come to tempt you, showing you outrightly right like you should do the wrong stuff satan will always come to seem like he wants to do god's will and then he will mislead you at the end of the day now we see a very good scripture in second corinthians where paul began to express this same thing second corinthians chapter number 11 right and i'll read from one would to god ye could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me two he now says for i am jealous over you if I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have exposed you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin of Christ. Three, watch this please closely. It says, but I fear, but I fear, least by any means, as the serpent begall Eve, through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He calls the message simple. That means there is no ambiguity. There is no high rema mystery, rem, uh, potter, and all that old ambiguity that we try to put in Christianity. He says, from the simplicity of Christ. That's the word he used here. He says, but watch the term. He says, but I fear, least by any means, right, as the serpent begore. Notice, what was the key thing that the serpent used to deceive Eve? It was wisdom because he said it was something that, that was desired to make one wise. Something that was desired to make one wise. That means today, if the devil will be deceiving us, he will be deceiving us with something that will seem to be in our interest, that will seem to be very wise, that will seem to make a lot of sense, but it will not be working the will of God. So you must be very careful. However, that's not the emphasis for this teaching. So I want to look something very deep here. So it says, but I fear, least by any means as the serpent begot Eve. 
So another thing I want you to pay attention to that you may not have noticed is that Eve did not see the serpent as Satan. If Eve had seen the serpent as Satan, it would have been easy for Eve to have rebuked and rejected the serpent. So let's come down the scriptures to 14. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Let's come to 14. And I want to see something in 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transfigured into an angel of light. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Are you seeing that? Next verse. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. Go up a little bit. 11. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So it says they are not apostles of Christ, but they transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. That means when you see them, they look like the apostles of Christ. Remember, this is not far-fetched. Jesus had mentioned something like this. He said, I sent you forth as sheep, right, uh, before wolf. He also told you, he says, there will be wolf in sheep clothing. There will be wolf in sheep clothing. That means when you see them, you will see sheep. But what they really are internally is wolf. So in other words, when you see them, they'll seem to be like for God. They'll seem to be like an apostle of God. But what they have internally or their purpose, what they intend to achieve is to lead you away from Christ, to lead you off the will of God. So you must be very, very careful. Now, but pay attention to what I want to show you, right? So look at 14, it says, And no marvel, for Satan himself, if he's making reference to Satan again, it will be coming from the conversation he started up. Remember, it says the serpent, right? List as the serpent deceived Eve. So in other words, watch this. It was clear that it was Satan who transformed himself and was speaking through the serpent. So the serpent in its original expression did not represent Satan in any way. The serpent by type did not represent Satan in any way. Now, the big one would now be, what did the serpent now represent? Christ, what's your proof? I'll show you. Numbers 21 from 4 to 9. But for the purpose of reading, I'll read 8 to 9. And you can read all of them. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass, that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Shall live. Jesus said in John 10.10, Right, I'm come that you might have life and have it to the full. Anyone that looks upon it shall live. So what are they looking? They're looking upon the serpent and they're they are living. Right? Remember, not very far. John chapter number three. We also saw the same expression where Jesus said, just the way they looked onto the serpent and then they had life. He says, the same way the Son of Man will be hung in a tree or on a cross, and then all that will come up, he will draw all men to himself. So he uses the serpent to express himself. I'll come again. He uses the serpent to express himself. Glory to God. So that means God uses the serpent as a type for Christ. God uses the serpent as a type for Christ. If God uses the serpent as a type for Christ, that the Samaritan copy is giving us as not the Nakash and the Shakash. Now, if God uses the serpent as a type for Christ, what would be wise for the devil to come into to be like? He would, he would need to come into the serpent to deceive man. Are you seeing that? That's why the, the temptation of Eve was not an easy thing. right? A lot of people just blame him all the time. But if you were there, you could have fallen yourself. So you see that the serpent was a type to express Christ. Glory to God. Very big and very deep. right? Matthew gives us another expression that I'd like you to see. Very amazing thought. Very amazing thought. Matthew chapter number 12. Right, gives us a big expression that I want you to see as concerning the serpent. When he says, Be wise as a serpent, and then become as a dove. Matthew chapter number 10, sorry. Right, if you read 16. Behold, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolf. Notice, please. Behold, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolf. Then he now says, Be ye therefore wise as serpent, and harmless as dove. Now, let me say this. If I say to my son, My son, I am sending you to those bad people. Right? I will now tell him, make sure you look like those bad people. No, it would not make sense. I'll say, make sure you remember the, the son of whose father you are. 
take from me. So watch this. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as dove. Put it in the right context. Be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as dove. The harmless is the word kaya. So it will be, be ye therefore wise as serpent. That is, harmless as dove. Hallelujah. This scripture has a cross reference. And I'd like to verify it because of time I will not go there. But I'll show you the cross reference. Philippians chapter number 2, verse number 14. Right? is the cross reference. 14 and 15. When it says, we have been sent in a crooked world. Then it says, however, shine as light. That's a cross reference for this expression. Right? So you see that the, the serpent he refers to here is not the devil. Notice in Genesis 1, he told you that the serpent was a wise animal. So wisdom was ascribed to the serpent, which of course Christ has been made unto us. Wisdom, 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 30. Christ has been made unto us. Wisdom. Are you seeing it? So what will it be meaning here? I send you as wise, and that is be harmless as dove. Glory to God. This expression that you found here, right? Matthew chapter number 10, verse number 16, was a beautiful expression. Jesus had had some other conversation. He had sent the 12 forth and had given some instruction. And then he concluded the instruction with this. to say, I know who I'm sending you. But don't forget that you have to act like me. You have to act like me just like you have seen. So you see again that Jesus begins to compare himself with the serpent as a type. As a type. Glory to God. You see, so, so the concept is Jesus, right, is wise, is the wisdom of the earth, is what we should manifest in this earth. And in that wisdom, in that wisdom, we ought to go. And that's the big point in this conversation is the fact that Satan always will come like Christ to tempt you. That's why you even see the expression with John. He says, anti-Christ. That means against Christ, but looks like Christ. I say that again. Anti-Christ. Against Christ, but looks like Christ. Satana, Asana, Greek and Hebrew, which means opposition, adversary, right, opponent, and then the accuser of the brethren. Glory to God. So, he's anti. He speaks against. He fights against, but he looks like. What do you mean by looks like? Because we already had a terminology in that light before. Alos Paracletos. Alos Paracletos. As against Eteros Paracletos. When Jesus, please pay attention. When Jesus was going to leave, he said, it's the spirit of that good that the comforter will come. He says, he will not leave you. He will be with you. Then he expressed the word for, the, for, for that expression, right? He uses was Alos Paracletos. What does it mean? Which means another of the same kind. Another of the same kind. Another of the same kind. So that means he is another, but it's not different from me. Okay? We saw the expression again in Galatians chapter number 1. In Galatians chapter number 1, he uses the word another gospel. He didn't use eteros. If he uses eteros, they would know easily. So he uses alos again. That means it is not the same gospel, but it will look like the same gospel. Pay attention to this. Very deep, very deep. It calls the Holy Spirit. Watch this. He didn't say eteros paracletos. Atlas Parkins will mean another being with another idea, opinion, and supply. But it says Alos Paracletos, which will mean the same like me, but even though it's in another shape or body or whatever. Now, in Galatians 1, when it says, if there be another gospel that will be preached, stay away from it, it is not what will be obvious for, for easy noticing. It's not what will be obvious because he uses the word there again, Alos again, which will mean it will look like the same gospel, but you will need to look microscopically. For you to understand that it is not the same gospel. So you see that Christians cannot overcome the devil until we have been thoroughly furnished by the word. Because the devil is not going to come as an obvious liar. The devil is not going to come as an obvious deceiver. He's going to come to seem like he's standing for, for Christ's interest. Are you seeing it? He's going to come like he's building with Christ. But you need to be thoroughly furnished of the doctrine and the spirit of God to be able to identify that this is not of God. That's why Eve was not able to identify. And that's why you see Paul now in 2 Corinthians is saying, I have to carefully, I have to jealously hold you. Notice he now says, please forgive my failing. That means apparently Paul would have done it in a way that did not make sense. Paul would have done it in a way that was even offending them. 
apparently because Paul knows that they cannot recognize the devil because Paul knows that they are not grown enough to know that Satan is talking so he had to do it in a foolish way however and he was apologizing and appealing to them to say I am doing it because I'm trying to guide you because this guy does not look like Satan he looks like an angel of light he looks like Christ himself he looks like an apostle of Christ he looks like God's messenger but however by what they are saying and teaching it is clear that it is not God's spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is very deep. This, the serpent in disguise. The serpent in disguise. Or the true expression about the serpent. Very, 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 very deep. Are you seeing that? So, there's another one last scriptures I'd like to read for which we'll close. Ecclesiastes chapter number 10, verse number 1, verse number 8. We've explored the scriptures where you found the serpent being used. I'd like to use this one to close the conversation. Glory to God. Amazing, amazing. Ecclesiastes chapter number 10, 1 to 8. But because of time, I will focus from, let's say, from 4 into 8. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not the place for yield pacified great offense. 5. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and an error which proceeded from the ruler. He called it an evil. He called it an evil. Please pay attention to that. Six, folly is set in great dignity, and rich sits in low place. I have seen servant upon horses, and princes walking as servant upon the earth. Eight, he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. And whoso breaketh an edge, a serpent shall bite. Whoso breaketh an edge, a serpent shall bite. So, what's the point here? Notice, if you go back to numbers, they messed up. Serpent beat them. It was serpent that they still looked up to. And then they leave. So, what is he trying to say here? He's trying to tell you that there is a serpent that bites. And there is a serpent that makes a life. Notice from 5, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and an error which proceeded from the rulers. So by the structure of this life, by the structure of evil under the sun, by the structure of this life, in wickedness, you have been taught and told that Christ bites. But in the real sense, Satan is the one biting. And who really gives life? Christ gives life, for which they look up to, and they get life. Christ truly gives life. So the serpent ought not to bite. The serpent ought to give life. But by the structure of condemnation, walking by the rulings of the devil, walking by the dictate and structure of the devil, the serpent now bites those who break an edge. Because the structure of Christ, those who break an edge, they receive mercy. He said, I love mercy. Glory to God, somebody. So watch this as I close. Pay attention to this. You must give attention to God's word. You must know God's word so you can know God's voice. So the spirit of God can work the will of God out of you. Otherwise, Satan will disguise like an angel of light, will show up in the cunning craftiness and express himself in serpent's subtleness and begin to mislead you and you'll be thinking you are doing the will of God, you're standing for God, but you are really not doing the will of God because there will not be growth of the spirit. There will not be fruit of righteousness. You will not be populating the kingdom of God and depopulating the kingdom of, of Satan. So it's not about a good statement, a right statement, a good walking. It's about doing something that is in the will of God. Remember Romans 10, Paul said something. Pray for Israel. He says they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. What did he say next? He says, they going about building their own righteousness and forsaking the righteousness of God. What's the righteousness of God? Hanging on Christ, on the finished work of Christ, what God has done in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. So, so you must be careful. It's not about laboring because the Bible tells in 1 Corinthians 3, it says every man's work will be subject to fire. It says every evil work we born. That means a work that we did that is not correct of scriptures, that is not within the love of God, they will all burn. And it says he will suffer loss. It says, but yet his soul shall be saved, but by fire. 
Glory to God. So align rightly with Christ. Align rightly with the word of God. Align rightly. So your labor will begin to count rightly. It's not about working. It's not about the congregation. As a matter of fact, it's not about how much man applaud you. It's about what heaven thinks about you, which is in line with your laboring correctly with the word of God, which we have uh, people who have done that before. Paul, Peter, John, and all these guys. We saw how they labored. They labored genuinely, selflessly, with correctness of doctrine. Go with the God. Remember, Jesus says, O oh, fool and slow of heart. Paul also said, O oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? Who have bewitched you? Right? Foolish Galatians. So, no matter how much you do, no matter how much sense you make, if it's not aligned with the correctness of Christ, you are foolish. Because foolishness is to walk against the will of God. Thank you, and God bless you. I love you. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.